We're told by Allah's Penal Dhab. And we accept what God has given as a criteria. We're accepting the deed. You say, I accept your invitation, Allah, to the worship, to the peace, to the surrender, to all the mercy that you can give me. And above all, you're saying that, oh Allah, I didn't done all of this, but I'm doing it in sincerity. Because it's the sincerity that helps us to see our way through life. But at the same time, it is the sincerity for Allah to look into your heart. To see exactly if you are clear on what you have said that you believe. And that we said that we accept our messenger, Prophet Muhammad, by asking some blessing be upon him, our prophet. But what do we see Muhammad, the prophet of God, as peace be upon him? He is the liberator. That is what we should see in our beloved prophet. We should see him as a man promoting as the, what was sent into the world by a loss of time. And that is he was sent to free religion for God. And as you, as a receptor of that truth, then you too have a mission in the world for God's purpose and for God's will and to free religion. And we know that religion, they say, is a way of life. In order for you to have that life, then you have to perceive it as our Imam Wafidi Muhammad has said you have to perceive it. We just recently were looking to, uh, listening to a tape. He was talking about religion and perception. Then let's know that life, as we go through it, is a perception. And that the religion is something not that you levitate, but we have to walk and talk with it on the earth. If we're not walking and talking with it on the earth, then you got to live in religion. So we believe that every prophet that brought in other words, we believe that every prophet brought the same religion to the humanity. And that there is no deviation in God's plan. And that our religion is not a pastime religion nor a, re a Sunday religion, mm -hmm. nor is it a Juma religion. Mm -hmm. But it's a religion that we have to accept and practice every day in the full light of history. Meaning that in Islam there's no blue law. No blue law. No limitations. When Friday get here and we pray, we rest, and then go back the, the next six days and, and commit sin and come back and pray again. No. God says this thing is petrol. So whatever you earn on the first day, then that's what you earn. Whatever you earn on the seventh day, that's what you earn. 
is that God does not regress, does not regress in his way. Man do the regressing. God is progressing. God is always taking us forward. Never backwards. I was bad wife who did behind him. He never took us backwards. He always tried to take us forward. Now, if we didn't want to go forward, whose fault is that? It's our own. So in other words, our religion tells us in a heartbeat, it says a man is the vendor of his own soul. You either progress, progress, win it, or you take it to its damnation. It's doomed. So a law is beautiful in that respect. So let's look here where a law. I say it again in his book. And how he points out to us, or the prophet points out to us, that matters of judge by uh, or religion, rather, matters in religion are judged by intentions. That's important. Matters in religion are judged by intentions. So every person should have that much which they intend. Peace of it says he migration into this religion was for God and his messenger, and their migration was for Allah and his messenger. But he whose migration was just to gain some worldly benefits or to chase a woman to pursue her to marry her then that is for which he migrated. But they'll live among us as if they come among us to live as they want to worship God. But they deceive themselves. Not a <coughs> so our leader points out, he says that if we want to correct our situation, he says we have to lead ourselves. That's plain. I know no other people on this planet who's progressing, progressing their needs, who don't lead themselves. If you want a good life, then you gotta lead yourself into that good life. If we want good community life, then we gotta lead ourselves into good community life. But I believe we do have that good community life. All we have to do is just live it. See? Live it. As we have been instructed to do. And that if you want to reach something, or you want to reach somebody, in whatever capacity that is. Remember that you reach them two ways. You either reach them through their intellect or you reach them through their heart. So if you want to speak to a man and you want the man or speak to a group of people who may be a particular race, the best effective way that you can talk to them is through their intellect. But when you, when I say the intellect, I mean you, you're talking to their intellect, but at, at the same time you're addressing their urges. See? So when you address the urges, then the intellect is stimulated, is able to rally and come to life and to begin to move in a direction in which that the person is pointing them toward. 
But if you want to address a person who's troubled, then you address the heart. But the best way to address the individual, per se, or particular, you address both. You address the intellect and you address the heart. What do our religion tell us in that respect? Our religion tells us this. It says that he who sees an evil lack, you have an alternative, you can address it with your tongue, you can address it with your heart, or you say my hand, but I say just with your tongue, your hand, then your heart. Now, but it says that addressing it with the heart is supposed to be the weakness of faith. Which is true, because you only leaving them with their emotions <coughs> intact. <coughs> so if I'm addressing something that I'm really troubled by, it, in my heart, if that's the way that I'm addressing it, then it's going directly to my feelings. It's going directly to my emotions. So there I'm left with that burden. But if I look at addressing it with my intelligence, then I don't become a martyr. I become a scholar. Because what does this religion tell us? The blood of a scholar is more precious than the blood of a martyr. So in other words, the longevity of life is seen and felt through the pen of the scholar or through the word of the scholar. That's where it's felt. It goes out. And it's long lasting. But if I go out and I do something heinous, then it's only short-lived. People have short memories. But if you do something in a scholarly way, inshallah, then people can pick it up and read it later. Or it will be sentimented later. As we are sentimenting what our leader, Imam Wafiq Muhammad, has left to us, and over the many years, and our wife over the many years that we have sinned among him and was able to be blessed by what he had to give. So we, we thank Allah for that. And that there is a term, it's called the uh, Nefs Lama, and that is the self approaching when he or she begins to be conscious of evil and good in him and it gets the upper it's the upper hand and become more meaningful in our life. So look at this. God is pointing out through his language that when we become conscious of good and evil, when was that conscious? When did that consciousness start? That consciousness started in heaven. When Adam was in heaven, that's where that consciousness started. Then the, then the book tell us, it says that when Adam was in heaven and he took of the forbidden tree, that's when he became conscious of what he had done wrong? Yes. So we look at how this translates 